Hello my friends, hello, it's Matthew Street, and yes, I'm back for another video. I know folks, I've been churning them out lately the last few days between my Listen With Matt series and some live stuff from the Midnight Callers and other videos I've made and a response to uh, Mr. Beatles Pro. I've been cranking them out the last three or four days, but it's going to start chilling <laughs> soon, I promise you. Anyway folks, I just had another thought in my head, and I said, I want to see if anyone else will jump on this. I'm not going to really call it a thread, or you have to do this, but any of my viewers out there that have channels, if you'd like to jump on this, I'd love to see you get involved in this and see what you think. And I was thinking about life in general, folks, and how, you know, that song by Mary Hopkin, those were the days, my friends, we thought they'd never end. Uh, you know, but... They do end, and we do get older, and life goes on. And I started thinking back about music and my life, and how there's so many pivotal moments in my life, and, and your life too. I'm sure you've had many pivotal moments, or milestones, as it were. Maybe that's what I'll call this video. Musical milestone albums, something like that. Memories, you know, maybe my thumbnail will be a picture of a photo album or something. I think I will do that, actually. Anyway, folks, I started thinking about, I didn't want to come all the way up to my age now. I turned 61 last year, so I don't think it's really necessary for me to come up. So I thought of the early part of our lives are usually the most pivotal, right? Those first 30 or so years when you're a young child, and then you're a preteen, and then a teenager, and then certainly the high school years a very pivotal, and maybe just after high school, whether you go to college or the military or into a career right away, or you get engaged to somebody, and getting married is a big milestone, a pivotal moment, having children. So I thought I would take it up to that point and show you a bunch of albums and then relate them to why these albums, when I look at them or see them or hear them, they take me back to a specific pivotal moment in my life. Now, obviously, the first two albums I have to show you are these two. I've talked about them a gazillion times because these bring me back to age three in 1964. These were the first two albums my parents bought for me as a young, young child. I used to bop up and down on my little uh, Pinto Pony spring horse up and down in the second floor apartment in Providence, Rhode Island. This was my introduction to the group I love so much, the Beatles. 1964. Now we have to go by a few years. Back in 1969 or so, I'll say approximately I'm age eight, and this album is very pivotal because I sat down with a couple of my cousins, my older two cousins, love the Beatles. They were another influence in getting me into the Beatles, and they played this album for me, spoke about this album to me, showed me the cover, has such an impression on me. So this album, whenever I see it, it takes me back to age eight with my cousins, 1969, and learning more and more about the Beatles and the advance of their music. Now I want to go to this one. And again, not all these albums are Beatles related. Some of these albums may be albums that aren't my favorites by any means, but they take me back to a moment in time, those milestones of life. So this one takes me back to like 1970 or so. I'm age nine, and I get up Christmas morning, and my parents gave me the cassette of Three Dog Night, naturally. And uh, uh, no, although they're not regarded as the greatest band of all time or whatnot, I still like them because they take me back thinking about my parents and my younger days in the early 70s. And my dad loved Three Dog Night and had many of their albums, so... Whenever I see Naturally, I think of my parents and being a young, young boy. The next one I would like to show you is The Kinks' Greatest Hits, because this takes me back to age 10, around 1971. It was one of the first albums I got on my own after The Beatles, if you get my drift. Like, The Beatles were it for me, obviously, throughout most of the 60s. But then as I became a young boy around age 9, 10 or so, I started to get albums on my own. One of the first Beatle albums I got on my own was the Hey Jude or the Beatles Again album. I did a video about that. But then this one was the other big one. This was the one that turned me on, opened my eyes up that there were other groups out there, other artists besides the Beatles. Kink's Greatest Hits, 1971, takes me right back to that moment in time. Okay. Have to show this one. 
have to show this one. 1972, I'm age 10, 11, going on 11 or age 11 or so, and I was turned on to the Raspberries Fresh album. And whenever I see this album, it takes me back to age 11, 1972, loving their hit songs. Uh, I Want to Be With You, Go All The Way is on their first album, but uh, Baby Let's Pretend, I mean, takes me back to that moment. And this is what led me from the Beatles, the Kinks, groups like that, and then getting into the Raspberries led me to other groups of that kind of ilk, early power popish ilk like Badfinger. So this is a pivotal album for me in my life, 1972. Okay, where are we going from here? Hmm. Let's go to 1973. I'm a young boy. My parents love music. They love playing music for us in the house. They love listening to it themselves. And my mom used to love this album. The Carpenters Now and Then from 1973. She played it constantly. Really got into it. I was, like I say, age 12 at the time. And it just brings me back to being in my parents' living room with their little two-speaker stereo and listening to music. My mom loved this album. Okay, let's go to 1976 now, and this takes me always back to 1976, and and being that uh, 14, 15 year old, <laughs> it just there's no way I can avoid it. This album comes on the radio, or I see the cover. I'm a 15 year old again. And it's 1976. Okay, where are we going to go from here? Uh, let's go to 1978, and I'll show these two albums. These were two big albums for me in 1978. I'm now in high school, uh, obviously, <laughs> uh, going back to probably that uh, 76 Boston album would have been my freshman year, and now we're going into sophomore, junior year. These two albums came out in 78. I saw the Kinks live in 78 on this tour, Ch you know, just opened my eyes to the Kinks big time, Misfits, and the Boston second album, Don't Look Back. These two albums bring me back to, like I said, sophomore, junior year or so. Love those albums. Okay, got my little list here. We're gonna oh, 1979, coming into um, senior year of high school. Well, then I have to show these three albums in succession. Cheap Trick at Budokan. Now I was into Cheap Trick before '79. Uh, it was like the Heaven Tonight album was the first one I got turned on to. Uh, but this was the first one that really made me a Cheap Trick fanatic. And whenever I see this album, listen to it. I'm a senior in high school again, and just digging the heck out of Cheap Trick. And this is another one, 79, uh, early part of 79, the end of my senior year, always takes me back to that moment. George Harrison, self-titled. And this is a big one for, like, graduating from high school, because this came out in June of 79. The single had come out before, but, you know, these two where they're like the latter half of senior year, this is the end of senior year. Going on from high school, from childhood to adulthood. Uh, Back to the Egg by Wings, June of 79, it came out. And I absolutely adore, adore this album. Age 18 that year. But then from that, this always takes me back to my next step in life. And that was in summer of 79, I went into the United States Air Force. I didn't go right to college, did the college thing later, during the Air Force and later. But get the knack. This is basic training, Lackland Air Force Base, among a lot of other music, The Cars, uh, second album there. Uh, I can think of so many albums from that period. But I'll go with this one because this one was that period of being in basic training at Lackland in Texas, San Antonio, and it takes me back to that every time. Then I got assigned to my first base in the UK, and you would think I'm picking UK album, UK only albums, but no, I got to go back to my roommate. Uh, Chris, who was still my friend to this day, he turned me on to the heavier side of music. And we went to see ACDC in London, and he got me into the women and children first. I got into all the Van Halen albums, all the ACDC albums. Thanks to my friend Chris, 1980, I'm assigned to the UK air base called RAF Bent Waters, RAF Woodbridge, for over two years. And these albums take me back to being in the dorm room with Chris and rocking out. So I figured I'd show those. Let's go to 1982 now. Now I'm at my second base, Layer Potter, 1982. And this is Plattsburgh Air Force Base, upstate New York. And these albums always take me back to that. <laughs> you know, among others, but I'm just picking a couple. Marshall Crenshaw's self-titled debut, 
Judas Priest, Screaming for Vengeance, a lot of the guys got into this album, and therefore I bought it, still have it. 1982, Plattsburgh Air Force Base, and I'm a 20, 21-year-old at this point in my life. Okay, where are we going to go after that? So that's 1982, uh, leaving the U.S. Air Force. Okay, leaving the U.S. Air Force. Well, no, let's go back first. Getting back in touch with my wife. I met her in late... 70s at Burger King, as I've told you before, we were really good friends and all that, but we really didn't start getting into the romantic dating stuff till I was coming home on my little breaks from Plattsburgh in 1982. We got back in really serious touch. So this album by John Denver, Seasons of the Heart, always takes me back to rekindling that friendship and romance with my wife. But then getting out of the Air Force, I got out in 1983, in the summer of 83, this is my End of the Air Force album. This came out so into it. Cuts Like a Knife, Brian Adams. Now we're going to go to Dating My Wife. Uh, I'm out of the Air Force now. It's 83 going into 84. And these two albums are the ones, folks. The, the Dating and uh, Getting Married to My Wife. This one, the real dating album. It was out big at the time. But then Mary and My Wife, we had the song called Heaven is one of our wedding songs. <laughs> And uh, she, she loved that song and this album, Woo! Getting Married. 1985, I'm 23, just about to turn 24. What are we going to go next? Well, let's go with Birth of Children, and this will be the end of it. 1986, this album always takes me back to the birth of my first son. He was born in 86, and now he's a father himself with two of my grandchildren. So this takes me back to my oldest son. And last but not least, let's go to 19, and that was 1986, 1990, my second and final child was born, my second son, and this album takes me back to that, the birth of my second son, who's now a husband and father himself to my third grandchild. So, Tripping the Life, fantastic, Paul McCartney, seeing this tour, uh, my son being born, it, it just takes me all back to it. So... That's it, folks. You know, I, I don't want to keep going further and make this thing an hour long coming up to age 61 <laughs> with pivotal milestones in my life. But give me a few of yours. What are some albums that take you back to those pivotal milestones in your life? You know, when you're a young child or preteen or high school years, maybe college years, military service, friends, significant others, engagements, marriages, children, maybe other uh, family situations. What takes you back? What music or albums take you back to those pivotal moments? Thanks, folks. Hope you enjoyed this quick video. A lot of fun. Bye-bye.